Hello and blessings, saints of the Most High God. I am Dale from the Priest of Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and this is our ongoing examination of Revelation. We're going to spend about a year looking at the book of Revelation and receiving what the Lord would teach us through His Word and through His Spirit. We're up to chapter 3 right now, uh, beginning with the first verse, and this is the message to the church at Sardis. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity, go back and uh, review the other messages, and you'll see sort of what's going on here in a bigger picture, okay? So here's the word of the Lord for this week. To the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. And then the Lord describes himself, as he has done in every one of these churches. The Lord says, I am the one who does a particular thing. And it reflects back to uh, the first chapter of Revelation and the vision that John had received. But sometimes there's something else that is added from the first chapter that may not be in the vision. And right here is an example of that. The Lord says this, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this. Now this is how the Lord describes himself. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Now, in our homework this week, we did an extensive amount of study to determine who the seven spirits of God is. Okay, Here's the bottom line. I believe that the seven spirits of God is the Holy Spirit. But it's not just good enough to believe that. You have to be able to show from the Word why you have that belief. Uh, so it's really beyond our time together right now to get into detail of that. But I would encourage you to go to Zechariah 4 and Isaiah 11. And in both places, you'll see examples of where the prophet received word from God. It gives us some insight that the seven spirits of God right here is a picture of the totality and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Okay, And what Jesus is saying, I'm the one who sends the Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples uh, back in the Gospel of John. He said, I must go to be with the Father, and I'm going to petition the Father. I want to ask the Father, and he will give one of a like kind, and he was referring to the Holy Spirit. He will give the Holy Spirit that I will send to you, that will comfort you, that will instruct you, that will remind you of things. So this is what Jesus is saying. I am the one who holds and has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. The seven stars we have seen before are the messengers that had gone out to these churches with this word that John had received from God. So the Lord says this. The first thing he says to every one of these churches is this. I know. Okay, I know. It's a wonderful word of comfort. It's also a wonderful word of warning. Okay, the Lord knows. In this case, he says this. I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive. Now, with every one of these churches at this point in time, he gives some word of commendation. Even when he had to give a very uh, tough corrective word, he gave a word of affirmation, a word of uh, a commendation. He does not do this with his church here at Sardis. Later on, we're going to see a word that he gives, which could be looked upon as being a, a, an affirming word in a way, but he really does not give an encouraging, affirming word uh, that is forthright. Here he says, I know your deeds. So we see that they have deeds, they have works. But the deed he's talking about is that you have a name that you are alive. And boy, when you start looking at this thing right here, in other words, everybody thinks that you're alive and you're really hitting it. Boy, you're doing great deeds and great works. And everybody thinks that you are about what the kingdom is about. But look what he says next. There is no doubt what the Lord is thinking. He says this, but you are dead. And I, is, is this not a word to the body of Christ today? Most of the body of Christ is running around doing so many deeds, so involved in works, doing so many great and wonderful things. Even our time of corporate gathering, our time of Bible study, we're, we're performing in such a way that we impress one another. But we are dead. Now, some people say, well, is he talking physically dead? Is he talking spiritually dead? He's talking about what the life of the true believer is supposed to be. And you see this with the balance of this passage. So let's go ahead. Verse 2 says this, wake up. So the Lord is giving warning. He's giving instruction. He's saying there's some things that you need to do. He says, wake up. Strengthen the things that remain, which are about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. The bottom line with this right here, I believe, is this. You're doing the deeds, and you're doing them in the name of the Lord. Okay, You're doing them the way uh, the, that people think you're supposed to be doing things and saying, God, God bless these things. We're doing this for you, Lord. But I'm sort of reminded of Matthew 7, verses 21 and 22. Go over and look at that. That's where Jesus says, you're doing all these great things, but I never knew you. Okay, He's saying your deeds right here are not complete because they're deeds of the flesh, and they're not deeds empowered by the Spirit of God. I believe that's the reason that the Lord says, I'm the one that has the seven spirits of God. The problem with this church was they were doing great deeds, but they were not deeds empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
okay? Some of them, as we'll see in a moment, are actually saved, okay? But they need to be functioning within the fullness of the power of the Spirit. Now, again, I don't have time to get into all that. But right now, I'll just tell you this. Much, much, much too much of the body of Christ are functioning in dead works. There are many who are actually saved. They're saved. The Spirit dwells within them, but they're not moving with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit for deeds that are directed from God. Okay? Now, verse 3. He tells them to do this. So remember what you have received and what you've heard and keep it and repent. And some people say, well, this shows right here that these people are actually saved, but they were just functioning in dead deeds. I would take you to the parable of the sower that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us. Okay? Go look that up in the Gospels. And you will find that that seed fell on four different kinds of ground. Only one of them was true, okay, true fertile ground that was a true repentance. You can believe and yet not believe unto salvation. In other words, yeah, yeah, I believe that. The scripture tells us this, even the demons believe and they shudder. So you have to have true faith that is manifested with true works. You can't have works to prove your faith. You can't have just faith without works, okay? James talks a great deal about that. So he says, therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. This right here is a major clue to me that he's talking to some people right here who are not truly saved. Because this is a picture that you see coming as a thief in the night. That's how the Lord, when he comes, that's how he be, he'll be perceived by the world. The world will not have a clue and it'll be like a thief in the night. But the scripture tells us, Thessalonians talks about this, that you are not like the world, but you are of light. Okay, we won't know the day nor the hour. Okay, we won't know the day nor the hour, but we will know the season when the Lord comes again. Now, verse four is is a word which is a bit of an encouragement. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So he's telling there. Okay, guys, there are some of you here. There's always a remnant. There's a remnant who have not soiled their garments. They have not pursued the path that has led to death, okay, of having a name that you are alive, but walking outside the empowerment of the Spirit. Now, the last two verses very quickly. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life. <laughs> you know, there's two major things in this, in, this, in this passage right here that people wonder about. One is the seven spirits of God. The other one is the, uh, the name being erased from the book of life. All sorts of debate over this. Here's sort of where I am. If you go look up the scripture passages that are related to this, uh, there's some where Moses uh, speaks of such things in Exodus. Paul talks about this in Romans. Uh, uh, David says something in the Psalms about this. And all of them saying, Lord, Lord, just erase my uh, name from the book of life to save your people. David was saying, Lord, can you take my enemies and erase their name? Here's what I think is being said. Everybody who has been conceived has their name in the book of life. If you call on the Lord in salvation, you are saved. Your name is either placed in another book, the Lamb's book of life, or your name is not erased from the book of life, and the book of life becomes the Lamb's book of life in the last days. It really doesn't matter. If you are truly saved and you're truly a born-again believer, your name is not going to be erased from something. But all mankind's name is placed in the book of the living, as David called it, okay? The book of the living. If you don't believe, there's going to become a time where your name is erased. You will see later on in Revelation that there's books with names and other books with our deeds. And then he says, I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. The Lord is saying, the ones who will do this, I will actually confess before God. And I'll confess before the angels that they are mine. And then the last word he says is what he's closed every one of them out with. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So I would say the same thing to us. Be certain that you discern the word of the Spirit, that you are not involved in just dead works, but that which we are doing is that which is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama. Thank you for being with us, and may God bless you. Goodbye.